Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Bitcoin as it surges higher, same deal with Ethereum, but are we out of the bear market? What signals can show us when the bears have been absolutely crushed? That's what we're looking at in today's video. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you can be updated with the content. It does go a long way and it helps the channel out of, uh, and show YouTube what you want to see in your feed. So without further ado, let's look at what we've been covering over the last few weeks. Got a few big videos here which I've been pointing people in the direction of, how to invest into cryptocurrency while the market is down and plans if you're on a budget. So definitely check those out. What to do if we're too late into the bear market or buying Bitcoin in a new bull market cycle. So check those out. And then of course, five days ago, we're looking at a massive week in Ethereum, all this massive news coming out. Uh, for the London hard fork and the burning of ETH, meaning the reduced supply. Um, so a lot of this has been feeding into the market. Of course, the trend was up and that's what we've been playing with. We've been playing with an uptrend. So this was the video here. Caution, huge week in Ethereum. We're at around 2,600. Market has now hit the 50%, which is at $3,000 for Ethereum. But let's start with Bitcoin and what I'm looking for here to decide whether the bears can be absolutely crushed. If you're new to the channel, you'll not have seen this before, but we look at the 50% level. It could be similar to looking at a 20 week or a 21 week moving average. And you're probably going to want to look at that on a longer term time frame, like uh, a weekly chart. And you've also got your 20 week moving average. But for us uh, being GAN analysts, so WD GAN, it's over 100 years old, his, uh, analyzed, uh, his, his research, and has stood the test of time. So this is all we do. We just look at 50% levels, and it's a faster indicator because you can see when tops come in and you start to measure 50% levels from major highs and major lows. That's all we're doing here because the market happens to use these as middle points. Funny that, they're 50% zones. They love the 50% levels, and you can see them get broken on strong volume and that's when you know that the market is about to flip in the opposite direction. Now, this is early days, this is 20, 2013. You got a low, high, 50%, it's around $150 on Bitcoin. Can you imagine that? Breaks through and then we just get that strong volume of the rest of the market going up. Let's use this time frame as well as a bit of uh, history to show us what we might see now in 2021. So you can see we got about 30 bars before the market took off and broke the previous all-time high. This could be something that plays out now. We had a high in April. We had a low in July, similar to now. Then we had another low come in uh, September after the market had run up as well. So we had a lot of these weeks moving up, some sideways, a quick correction, and then a takeoff to new all-time highs as well. And that was a 50% break on strong volume, good signs. Market comes down, it tries to, to hit a 50% level, which wasn't put in, but it becomes a 50% level later, which is an interesting sign on its own. Uh, and then we fall into around that $150 to $200 level. But the, the main thing to note here is what we're seeing now in the market. A few weeks up, a lot of excitement, a little bit of volume comes in, but the overall volume is down and then the market falls again. And then we get a few more weeks up, another few more weeks up, and then we go on this huge run. So, Hopefully, we were on some sort of run like this to extend the, the bull market and to go further uh, into the bull market and break through the 50% and, of course, the all-time highs. But if we're not, then we just got to be cautious, continue to dollar cost averaging in using a plan, definitely use a plan. And if you're unfamiliar with it, we'd use something like a fear and greed index plan here on the channel, which I'll show you in just a sec. Similar to uh, buying when the fear is out in the market at extreme fear times. This is another attempt here to hit the 50% level, which was a major zone, major low to the all-time high of the time. We attempt it and we fall and break down. We break through the 50%, can't hold if we look at it on a longer term chart like a monthly, because again, we want to look at big time frames, not just daily stuff. You want big moves, long-term moves. You want to see these things happen on long-term charts like monthly charts or two-week charts. Break above and then we quite quickly came and closed below the major 50%. Then finally, we get the breakout of our minor 50% level. So you can see this, this section here. So this is one of the cycles. We get a break 
COVID happens, but then we bounce back above it. Then we take out the major 50% on some good volume and the rest is history. So where do we sit now? Now we sit on top of our 50% level. Funny that. We've got some good closes above it. So that's a good sign. The monthly, we are uh, starting to drop off on the volume, which is not a good sign. So the worst case scenario would be that we would fail at our 50% level, which is around 47,000 and then get rejected, break down underneath these lows and then come back to another support level. Worst case scenario is what I see here. Best case scenario, well, a middle case scenario before we get to a best. Middle case is we come up, test our 50. Maybe we don't break through it cleanly, but as we come back down, we come and sit on some support around the 34s, 32s, 36 level and begin to form a higher low before we can attempt the 50% again. It's like doing a uh, some sort of fight or a race or something. You're going at it, you attempt it, doesn't work, you come back, you retreat, you build some energy and then you attempt it again. Best case scenario from here, we break above 47K on strong volume, consolidate above the 47K, meaning we spend a few months there and continue to build a base and then take off again to take on the uh, 58, 60K level, build a base and then break through the 65K level, which was the old all-time high, take off to new all-time highs. Okay, that's what I see for each of the cases. Looking at it on a, on a daily chart now, we're hitting our minor 50%. So hopefully we can hold above this. We do have a bit of volume coming back in. So I like that. Uh, but as of, of we've, co we've covered before, 47K is my level. We had a few levels on the way up, of course, 42, which was the old highs. We've almost cleanly got past that. And then of course the 44K level, but 47 is my major level here that I really want to see this market get above, consolidate and then start to move again. So that's Bitcoin at the moment. Am I getting overly excited for what there is? Not just yet because I need to see the bears get absolutely crushed. All right. And that's when we get super excited. Otherwise, we're just buying on the fear like we have been doing through that 30 to 35K level and got an average price of around 34K, as you can see on the fear and greed uh, plan here and all of our buy dates with buy prices, average amount, oh, sorry, the Bitcoin price today, average uh, average profit and the return so far, about 30%. This doesn't mean Bitcoin won't fall beneath those levels, but at least we were buying some of those lows so we can calm the FOMO as this market continues to climb past 44K. Now onto ETH. So ETH USD has broken past the 50% level. It's broken past some of these highs set back here in June. All right. The next thing is that we need to do is uh, form some sort of base. You can see that this level has been uh, broken and we've tested it again, came back a little bit and broken above. So if we can stay in this zone, continue to consolidate, keep it around the 50% level, that's a really good sign for ETH. ETH on the BTC chart is also looking okay. We've moved back up. We are above our 50% level at the moment. Weekly close is coming in tomorrow. So we'll keep an eye on that as well because we definitely want to see the week close above the 50% level being around that 0 0.068. So about a 7% Bitcoin value. Uh, if we can do that, then of course, we just want to see that consolidate above that level and then continue to climb out. Am I getting overly excited for ETH? A little more than Bitcoin at this stage because we are starting to gain on Bitcoin uh, and that's why we obviously hold ETH as well as Bitcoin because in the early stages, this is generally what happens to the market. We get the big players moving first as we can see from our little chart here, secrets of crypto, progression of altcoin pumps through an alt season. So at the start, latest technology, innovations, that stuff pumps. The middle, lesser known good quality projects that are under accumulated in Satoshi value, the Bitcoin value. They start to pump and then at the end of it, the old OGs, the dead stuff, the garbage, the meme coins start to pump. So are we seeing the end of this pump of ETH and Bitcoin? Is, are, the, are the bulls running out of steam? Looking specifically at this, uh, I, take a, I take a glance at say Dogecoin, which is up a lot today. I take a, a glance at SHIB, Shiba Inu. Regardless of what you think of the projects, whether you love them, you believe that they're the next big thing, uh, you know, they're not as bad as everyone says they are. We can see that the dog meme coins are pumping a lot more than the rest of the market in this top 50, right? So I've got to take that into account. I'm definitely, definitely 
looking at this here saying it's the end of maybe an intermediate pump. Old OG coins, dead coins, even complete garbage are pumping. Is it the absolute end? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But we have gone through a little bit of this cycle of um, obviously Bitcoin's moved, ETH has moved. Some of the, the middle players have been moving. We've seen DOT move. We've seen Cardano move a little bit. We've seen Uni move, which are tokens in our top 20. We've seen Chainlink move. We've seen Solana move. You know, so these are the middle ground. We've seen some of the other players move a little bit. And then some of the dog stuff is moving as well. I don't know if it's the exact end, but I have to take that in consideration because this has happened so many times in the past that if I don't, then I'm pretty much a fool for not considering it at all. So ETH at the moment is looking pretty good. Uh, even the dominance is looking great. You know, we're starting to break or hopefully getting closer to some old highs. And the dollar value, again, looking good. Recap, the dollar value, sorry, is looking good here. That was the Bitcoin value is looking pretty good. We're above a lot of our 50% levels. That's what we want to see in order to crush the bears and get on board with the, the Bitcoin bull again. Uh, we'll keep updating this. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Follow with the subscribe button, bell notification icon, like the video up and uh, join us on the Investor Accelerator membership. Links to that are down below. Specials are still going on for that during this downtrend of the market. Uh, if we don't see the market blast off from here, I don't think that's a stressful thing at all. I hope you guys don't either because that just means we have a longer period to accumulate and for the market to gain strength. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. I know a lot of new people want to see it just take off as soon as they have bought. But if you give it time, you're going to get bigger gains. I hope you guys enjoy that. Question for you guys is, do you think we are about to cross through the old all-time highs for Ethereum? Is Ethereum going to take out 4,400 or are we going to get a retreat from here and possibly come back and test some of the support levels? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.